Good day again. We're back with the EXP Express lectures. Our next port of call is the general deduction formula. Having determined the taxpayer's gross income and then excluding the exempt income, our next step is to deduct all allowable deductions in terms of the Act. As you can remember, after income, we said allowable deductions and allowances or whatever that are housed from Section 11 to Section 19 of the Income Tax Act and read along with Section 23. And when I speak about the Income Tax Act, it's the Income Tax Act number 58 of 1962 that we speak about. And our next slide tells us that for Section 11 to kick in, there must be a trade that is carrying on. So as an ordinary individual employee, you cannot deduct anything under Section 11. There must be a trade and there must be income that is derived from this trade. Section 23G works to prohibit the deduction of any monies claimed as a deduction to the extent to which the monies are not laid out or expended for the purposes of trade. So all this is trying to do is trying to rein in Section 11. So Section 23 reigns in Section 11. Section 11A, what we commonly call the general deduction formula, requires that there be expend, expenditure and losses that must actually be incurred during the year of assessment in the production of income and these expenses must not be of a capital nature. What do we mean when we say carrying on a trade? For there to be carrying on a trade, if there is continuity of activities, then we can say that there is a carrying on of trade. And if the long-term objective of the trade is to generate a profit, then we can also say that such trade may constitute carrying on of a trade. It is a very complex definition and it can be a very complex question to answer if some examiner really wants to be nasty and examine you on carrying on of a trade. Any pre-trade expenditure and losses, Section 11 capital A allows for the deduction of qualifying expenses incurred before the commencement of a trade. So you actually want to start trading. You register your entity on the 1st of August 2012, but you actually start trading on the 1st of December 2012. So all the expenses that you incur from the 1st of August to the end of November 2012 would form your pre-trade expenditure and losses. A requirement of Section 11A, your expenditure and losses, there are two very classic cases that we use for the general deduction formula. The one is Joffe and Company versus CIR, and the other one is Port Elizabeth Tramway Company Limited versus CIR. And in Joffe and Company, the courts considered the meaning of the word loss. In PE Tramway, as we commonly call it, um, the court considered that the word appeared to mean losses of floating capital employed in the trade which produces the income. Actually incurred, incurred does not mean paid. As long as there is a liability to pay an expense, then it will be deductible. You don't have to physically go out and pay the expense. There must be the liability ability and it must be an unconditional liability to pay. During the year of assessment in Concentra PTY Limited versus CIR, it was noted that deductible expenditure is restricted to that incurred in the year of assessment. 
it cannot be carried forward or back even though it may relate to that year so we do not use the matching principle to deduct expenditure if expenditure is incurred in this year of assessment even though it is expenditure for the next year of assessment if you do not deduct it from your income in this year of assessment you will lose it so we do not have the matching principle in income tax we only have it in accounting in the production of income to determine whether an expense is in the production of income two questions need to be asked what gave rise to the expense and is the expense closely connected with the income earning activities if your expenses are closely connected to your income earning activities you will say that this expense is in the production of income if not you cannot claim a section 11 a deduction on it because it would not be closely related to your income earning activities remember we go back to section 23 here new state areas limited versus cir they found that the costs of working capital assets generally constitute non-capital or revenue expenditure which is normally deductible the acquisition of a capital asset constitutes a capital expense and then they made a distinction between the two types of capital your floating capital expense is your deductible expense and your fixed capital expense would only qualify for capital allowances which we will come to later that is the general deduction formula in a nutshell remember it must not be of a capital nature it must be an expense or a loss actually incurred in the production of income in the year of assessment specific transactions if there is an advance payment two problems would arise if an expense is actually incurred whether an enduring benefit is created and if it is held that an enduring benefit is created that means it is of a capital nature <coughs> excuse me um, in ITC which means income tax case it was held that incurred means paid or becoming liable for if the payment creates an enduring benefit it would be of a capital nature and not deductible and the deduction may be limited by section 23h as i told you we always limit deductions by section 23 we allow deductions by section 11 to elect to section 19 of the income tax act that is in short the general deduction formula remember it is only applicable to trading activities so if you are a sole practitioner and you are trading, you can apply the general deduction formula. However, if you are an individual who is an employee, you cannot apply the general deduction formula. That is it for this recording. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.